Mary Matt's creator of Twisted Yarns. The garter stitch creates a fabric that is absolutely flat. It does not roll in any direction, up, down, or sideways, which makes it ideal for use for bands on garments, hats and scarves, and in edging on a variety of projects, and so much more. In this video, I will demonstrate how to use the Chris Crafter Garter Bar to create the garter stitch on the LK150. And just as importantly, I will quickly cast on with my method that perfectly complements the garter stitch. These techniques are applicable on any machine using a Chris Crafter garter bar. Toward the end, you will also find a bonus section on troubleshooting and counting garter stitch rows. If you are not familiar with the Chris Crafter garter bar, watch part one of this series to acquaint yourself with the equipment and the basic techniques. All the links are in the description below. But for now, let's start. I want to start and I want to have a beautiful cast on for my garter bar edge. So I am going to pull all these needles out to hold position, lower my stopper so that it freezes up these needles, and then I'm going to go on to doing a perfect crochet cast on. I put a, a clip on my yarn. I'm going to make a little V with my yarn. My yarn tension is really loose. You can keep it, I just keep it loose enough so that it doesn't flop around. Pick up that, that feeder yarn and pull it through. What that does is it creates a loop on that first hook without a knot. And then we're going to proceed across in that same fashion where I bring up my hook between the next two needles, pick up the yarn and pull it through. Next two needles, pick up the yarn, and we're going to continue across this whole thing. When we get to the last needle, we're taking that loop and we're just placing it on that needle. Then we're taking the yarn, moving it between the first and the second needle, and over and put it into our carriage. Push this knitting back to the needle. I'm removing my stopper, my carriage is on knit. It's on the, the Roman numeral two on both sides. Garter bar work loves weight. I'm going to put weight on each end and in the middle. And now I'm going to knit back. I'm ready to start turning. Now I'm going to use my garter stopper again, my garter bar stopper, needle stopper, to pull all the needles out to hold and put and drop it into place to secure those needles so they don't move. Then I take my garter bar. Push all the stitches on the needles back to the needle bed. That does two things. Once it gets it out of the way, but it also opens all the latches. Then all I have to do is flip my garter bar around so that the little points are pointing at the machine and there's a slot for each needle because this is spaced for this machine. I'm going to place them on the hooks and you can watch the first video to get the exact action but I'll describe it as we go. So they're all on the hooks. My This edge is just a little bit raised up. I find that to be the easiest. Now the first couple rows are kind of tricky because what you want to do is you just want to pull the knitting off. And the reason the first couple rows are tricky are because there's hardly any distance on the knitting. That's where waist yarn would come in handy. Okay? So now, to remove the garter bar from the machine, you push it toward the needle bed, which opens all the latches again. If you saw that, I'm going to lift it off. Okay, now I'm going to turn it. Okay, now, but the trick is with this garter bar, see these little openings just below the knitting? What we want to do is we want to put the tips of the hooks right in there and drop it down. Now, what you're looking for is if everything is right, 
You can flip it like this and you can look to see that everything is right and I do advise you doing that. But the real true test is when you push the needle, the um, garter bar down, it comes right out. It's not hung up. Okay? Then you push all the stitches back to the needle bed with the base of this. So you don't have to handle a lot of different tools. Now, it is advisable to take your yarn out so it doesn't get snagged on anything. Take your stopper off. Make sure your carriage is set to hold because all these are in hold position. All these are back. And you take a free pass to the left. Rethread your machine. This side of the carriage, ooh, hanging up on the, this side of the carriage is set to knit. So we go to the right. We just did our first row of garter, but you can't see it quite yet. Let's do a few more, and so let's get into the rhythm of it. There is a rhythm to of it. You can leave your carriage set to hold on the left and knit on the right because we're only going to do those two things in those general direction. The trick to garter making the garter stitch is that you have to change the direction of the knitting. You have to flip your knitting every single row. So what we're going to do is once again with the stopper plate or the needle stopper, pull them all out to hold, drop it into place, then we use the action of our garter bar, push all the stitches back. Now I'm going slow. This goes a lot faster when you're not talking about it. So I'm going to push all the stitches back to the needle bed, flip her over, Drop them into place because all those latches are open, waiting, keeping those needles ready to go, and just pull these all on to my garter bar. Then I push, this is important, push the needles, push the garter bar toward the needle bed and open all those latches and just lift it off. Then I turn it. Now the stopper plate helped me out there, didn't it? Sure did. Okay, now what you want to do is, now I've turned my work, so all I want to do is let it fall into my hands, line up those little slots, and let those stitches drop on, and just drop it off. Use your bar to push all the stitches back. Now I do that before I remove the stopper. Okay. Now I'm unthreading my machine, and once again, by doing it at this point, I have my yarn in my hand and I'm ready to just do a free pass. Free pass and I'm ready to re-thread. I don't have to move it all in weird places and then I just knit back. So, let's do it again. Take the stopper plate and pull all the needles forward into hold. Drop the stopper plate. Then take your garter bar, push all the stitches back, opening all of the latches. Flip this over, slip it on the tips of the needles, pull it all off, push this back toward the needle bed, and lift it off. Flip your knitting, align your stitches, whoops, I see, I saw that, but I would have felt it in just a minute. You want to then align all your stitches with the little slots at the bottom, drop them into place, 
and remove your garter bar. You can push all these back, lift this up, we're still on hold, going this way, up. Managing that feeder yarn is probably the hardest part of it. End of the cross. We align those little slots at the bottom with the stitches. Whoops, I didn't get them in the right place. There we go. Now they're all aligned. And you just bring it over. And I'm doing it in slow motion. It's harder to do in slow motion. I want you to see exactly what I'm looking for when I'm checking. Now, from the top, it looks perfect. I'm checking all the way across. And that looks like there's one stitch per each hook. But this is where I pull it down and I check right under the needles to make sure I have a little space. If I don't, and this one is going to hang up, now it will not work. And if you find one like that, there you go, you are going to simply pick your work up, tip it up like that, and take it off the needles. I caught something else. The garter bar will not come out if you do that. And you want to make sure when you're checking that you do that before you try and get the garter bar out. So now I'm going to put my stitches in and now let's take a look. I'm checking all my stitches and see I'm pulling it a little bit down. There, that one's clear now, see? So now I watch this. Comes right out. That is probably the biggest problem that you're going to run into is you're going to get, you're going to either pick up the stitch below or part of a stitch and it'll snag. Your garter bar will then hang up on your, on your work. Okay, so now I have, believe I've done 12 rows, but I'm going to pull this out and I want to show you how you can count your garter, your garter rows. Every garter row will be a pearl side, a pearl ridge. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if I look at the back where I turn it, you'll find that I have one, two, three, four, five, and I believe six. Because I have one here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So as long as you have six on both sides, you have 12. If you had five ridges on one side and six on the other, then you have 11 rows. I have 12 rows here. In part three, we will learn to make the Quaker stitch, which is sometimes called the ridges stitch. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please take a moment to subscribe and ring the bell to receive notifications of upcoming videos and events. Happy machine knitting!